My name is Mitchell Renz. Please follow me on Twitter at MitchellRenz365. And don't forget to subscribe to that new YouTube channel, The Oakland Raiders Report. Now, I talked about my news, talked about some rumors. Now I'm going to get into some, my six takeaways from OTAs that you guys cannot miss. I guess you can look at it as maybe a little bit of six-pack that I want you guys to crack open. So, Elena, take me to my six takeaways, please. Awesome. Maurice Hurst, first one, will get major playing time. As Ted Nugent of The Athletic revealed early on in OTAs, rookie fifth-round pick defensive tackle Maurice Hurst received some workout right out of the gate with the first team defense. This also resulted in second round pick PJ Hall working with the third group. Hurst is oozing with talent, but that has never been the question. Assuming everything checks out with his heart condition, which all reports state it has, the former Michigan star could wind up being a starter from day one with the Raiders. Also, it has seemed to be he's getting better throughout OTAs and is going to be a fun name to watch during training camp. Now guys, let's bring up real quick Maurice Hurst's numbers at Michigan. This guy was an absolute stud, and there's a reason why he, in our opinion, was a first-round pick here at Chat Sports. Sure, 2014, his freshman year, but then you look at 2017, 2016, just absolutely dominating the Big Ten, and I think he's going to be able to do the same for the Oakland Raiders. Next takeaway I got for you guys coming up on the board, there is a serious quarterback battle behind Carr. At the beginning of OTAs, the Raiders had Connor Cook receiving snaps ahead of EJ Manuel, which was surprising to me. As you can tell, Gruden is going to make whoever wins the number two quarterback job earn it. It became widely apparent early on during OTAs that Gruden wants to see his quarterbacks duke it out for the number two position this offseason. So guys, real quick, I want to show a quick listicle here of the Raiders depth chart because ultimately, well, quarterback depth chart now is a little bit thinner because Christian Hackenberg is no longer on the team and well, not that I'm totally surprised by that at all. You can see right here, though, the depth chart. we got Derek Carr, clearly the number one guy, and then Connor Cook, E.J. Manuel, battling out for that second spot. Connor Cook, to me, just never really has shown to be much of a quarterback. I saw in that playoff game all I needed to see against the Texans with a 40% completion percentage. Like, come on, that's not for me. And E.J. Manuel, yes, he's been hated on throughout his career a bunch, but I thought he actually played pretty well when he had to fill in for Derek Carr last season. Now, let's get into the very next one. Leon Hall and Daryl Worley favorites for the third cornerback spot. There wasn't anything eye-popping said about Worley and Hall, but the duo got some work with the first team and were pretty active when it came to getting reps during OTAs. While Melvin and Conley are the top two corners on the Raiders, it's going to be interesting to see how the next two spots fill out. At this moment, Worley and Hall have the early edge, but if rookie Nick Nelson is healthy, he could also make a push, assuming he lives up to his expectations. Now, guys, just want to bring up some numbers here on Leon Hall and Worley stats. You can see Hall there in 2017, 2016. Not a lot of games started. And you look at Worley, he was a guy who I thought played pretty well in 2017 when he was healthy, and then 2016 as well. Guys, a quick reminder that today's Oakland Raiders report is brought to you by Mizzen of Maine. Head over to www.comfortable.af and grab yourself one today because those shirts are indeed comfortable as F. Next one I got for you guys coming up on the board. Next takeaway, Marshawn Lynch is probably going to get pushed a little bit by Doug Martin. While Lynch entered the offseason as the clear-cut number one running back in the Raiders' backfield, apparently Gruden loves Doug Martin and he isn't afraid to show it. As SB Nation's Levy Damon revealed, the coach answered a question about Martin on a conference call early in OTAs and simply raved about Martin. This is what he had to say. A lot of people may have fallen asleep on Doug Martin. He's a two-time All-Pro. He had almost 1,500 yards in two different seasons. He has not looked good. He has looked good here, and he's looked amazing. Not only could Martin push Lynch for carries right out of the gate in 2018, but Jalen Richard and DeAndre Washington will likely find themselves in the middle of a crucial training camp battle for the number three running back job, it seems. So, guys, real quick, Doug Martin's last three years, 2017, 2.9 yards per carry. 2016. 2.9 yards per carry, but 2015 maybe is the year that John Gruden's chasing after, and you can see why there. I mean, 1,400 yards. He's got two seasons with 1,400 yards, but his other four or five, they're all under 500 yards. So I'm hoping if he is the main guy, we get 1,400 yard Doug Martin, the muscle hamster. Next takeaway I got for you guys coming up, Oakland. They are really excited about Gary on Conley. Gary on Conley's pure talent was never in question last season, but some did question his durability, which was somewhat unfair. A shin injury sidelined him for almost the entire season, but he enters this offseason as the number one cornerback for the Raiders. And as Michael Gelkin of the Las Vegas Review revealed, Gruden is pretty high on the second round cornerback, second year quarterback, my mistake. Conley is special. He was a top pick in this draft for a reason, Gruden told Gelkin. He's not the only one who raved about Conley. He's He's heard praise from his teammates such as Rashawn Melvin, Reggie Nelson, and defensive coordinator Paul Gunther. 
Now, guys, let's again, let's look at Gary on Conley's numbers from Ohio State because this guy, there's a reason why he was drafted in the first round. And when you look there at his numbers, he absolutely dominated at, at Ohio State and he dominated the Big Ten. Last takeaway I got for you guys coming up on the board. Nobody knows who will be the Raiders' third linebacker or weak side linebacker. Second-year linebackers Markel Lee and Nicholas Morrow have each received their fair share of praise this offseason. Veteran Derek Johnson even spoke about taking Morrow under his wing while Lee got some praise from defensive coordinator Paul Gunther. These two seem likely to have an edge on the third linebacker spot, but the team also brought in Michael Kendricks for a free agent visit. So nothing is set in stone. The training camp competition at linebacker should be a good one, but I expect either Morrow or Lee to emerge from the group, which also includes multiple free agent signings. Now, guys, let's look at the quick Raiders weak side linebackers. We got Emmanuel Lamar, Nicholas Morrow, and then Brandy Sheldon. So I want to know from you guys, though, real quick, because we might not be having this conversation if Navarro Bowman was playing for the Raiders still. Do you want the Raiders to bring back Navarro Bowman? If it's a yes, give me a heart. If it's a no, give me a like. I would love to see what you guys have to say. Raider Nation, thank you so much for tuning in to Raiders Report. My name is Mitchell Rance. Please follow me on Twitter at MitchellRance365. And make sure you guys subscribe to the new Raiders channel, the Oakland Raiders Report, on YouTube. And until next time, go Raiders.